Hey guys, welcome to the kitchen. All right, so a little bit, things are a little bit different today. Things have changed in my life a little bit in the last week. Uh, and so we're in my kitchen. Baby's in the next room. Zonker's right down here. Um, and so we are going to get into Iran and we're going to do it super quick. And here's why we're going to do it super quick. It has nothing to do with things that have changed in my life. Here's why we're going to do it super quick. My friends, you know the stuff now. Now we can just say it's unitary. You know what that means. We can say it's a unicameral. You know what that means. I don't have to go through each step of the way and explain things. So you can be like, oh, unicameral. I, it's just like China. Okay, it's different than the UK. You can start making those comparisons right away with all of these steps along the way. And so I can explain a little bit of the vocab that we need, but for the most part, you know the stuff, and so the, that's automatically gonna make our lecture a little bit shorter today, okay? So, welcome back. We're looking at Iran today, and why do we wanna look at Iran? Well, first of all, it is associated with what we think of as Islamic fundamentalism. So, second, it is atypical and unrepresentative of the politics of Islam and of the Middle East. And third, uh, and maybe most important, Iran has complex and often tense international relations, especially with the United States with nuclear deals. And so we're gonna to get to that at the end of the lecture today. So fundamentalism refers to, if we remember back to, I think it was chapter six maybe, fundamentalism refers to in the literal interpretation of a faith serving as the basis for a political regime and a practice that is not restricted to Islam. And I gotta go shut Zonkers up, I'll be right back. All right, we got Zonkers shut up and so here we go. So fundamentalism again, refers to a, it's a literal interpretation of a faith serving as the basis for a political regime. So it's not a theocracy, a theocracy is run by the religious leaders. Fundamentalism is, it is the basis for the law, okay? So if the United States were to, their 10 laws were the 10 commandments, that would, that would count, okay? So a little bit different, so we're, we're making, making those connections now. So it is a practice that is not restricted to Islam, but we often think of it as Islamic, okay? Uh, only about 10% of the world's Muslim population are Shiites. Uh, this minority group is distinct in its position on the rightful successor to Muhammad. Uh, about 60% of the population in Iran is Persian, and some of the ethnic minorities are Sunni, rather than Shiite, and so we're going to see some some issues, and I think that you're going to be watching that video about Sunni and Shia, Shiites with uh, Mrs. Skoma, so pay attention to that video, my friends. Iran is a large country. Uh, it's about the size of Alaska, and um, it's barely smaller than Mexico. Uh, the population is very young, and it is larger than the UK. Uh, the 2017 electoral victory of Rouhani has been cre credited to the young population. They're coming out to vote in the UK and in, in, in Iran, and they are not in the United States. Things to note along the way, okay? Iran has the fourth largest oil reserves and the second largest national gas reserves in the world. So you bet you can see what's gonna happen here with riches, okay? In the millennium BCE, Cyrus, Darius, and Xerxes uh, created an empire that stretched from India in the east to the Greek city-states in the west. Uh, the empire was destroyed by Alexander the Great in 334 BC, uh, but nonetheless, Persia has continued to have dynasties and shahs uh, through the sixth century. And after the death of Muhammad in 632, uh, military conquest was used by Muslims to spread Islam. Uh, the Umayyad uh, dynasty conquered Persia and brought Islam with them. And the population slowly converted from Zoroastrianism. I can never say that. I can't even when I taught world history, I couldn't say that. So we're going to try it again. Zoroastrianism. Okay, I think I got it that time. Under this dynasty, the Arabic language was forced into the people. And though many still use Farsi in Iran as their native tug, um, Arabic is the is kind of the national language. So later, as we've seen before, the Mongol Empire is going to devastate Persia from the 13th to 15th centuries. They, they basically take over Eurasia, okay? As we transition to the modern era now, uh, the Savaid dynasty from 1502 to 1736 was responsible for choosing Shiism, okay? So now we're starting to find the faith, the core faith um, roots for, for Iran. 1500s, okay? So a long time, deep roots in Iran. So this is, people say, why do they do things like that? It doesn't make sense. It does make sense to them, okay? It's been that way for 500 years. That's a long time. I can't commit to things for three days, okay? 500 years. 
uh, the faith's core belief is that Islamic leadership is linked to the descent from Muhammad and his son-in-law Ali. Okay, the inheritors of religious authority are the Imams, and the Mahdi is the hidden Imam concealed by God. Uh, awaiting his return is a messianic element uh, similar to Christianity. Another similarity with Christianity is the belief that politics are secondary to faith, uh, a belief that is seemingly at odds with an Islamic republic. Okay, so whereas Sunni Islam is decentralized, Shiites since the Savids have had high-ranking clergy, the Ayatollahs, uh, who are like Christian bishops, although there is no equivalent to uh, like like the Pope in, in, in Catholicism. Uh, the, cat, the Constitutional Revolution occurred in response to growing discontent with the monarchy's perceived subservience to Britain and Russia, um, and all had one clear goal, and that goal was to uh, limit the monarchy. Uh, it led to the creation of the Majlis, a legislative body that we're going to talk a little bit about, and the first constitution that the country had. But there was no agreement on the future of the regime. Okay, And so remember, regime is the type of government, not the actual government. The government is the people. You got this stuff. You got this. They're remembering this stuff. We're going to get fours and fives. It's going to be crazy. We're coming back for a pizza party, right? Sam, you're paying. In 1907, the United Kingdom and Russia created formal spheres of influence. United Kingdom and Russia. Then, over the course of World War I, various empires and powers tried to establish dominance over Persia. But the war ended with the UK as the dominant occupier. 1921, military officer Reza Khan uh, led a coup and established his control over the country. The British were happy to see a strong man in power, and although they did not plan or support the coup, uh, it is seen to this day as an imperialist plot. Uh, Reza Khan created to, uh, create, he sought to create a republic, um, but the clerics in the Majlis saw a republic as a threat to faith, okay? Um, and so, therefore, they appointed Reza Khan the new Shah, and he renamed himself Reza Shah Palvi. Uh, and the Shah was w the one who was pushed, uh, who pushed dra dramatic modernization while also reaching back into pre-Islamic history to anchor a national identity. Okay? So we've got all these things forming in the early 1900s. Uh, so uh, Palvi was appointed by, Shah, um, by the Majlis in 1925 and pursued dramatic westernization and state building. At this point, uh, we see a reformed bureaucracy. Newly instituted education on all levels, developed roads, a rail system, uh, established state-owned businesses, and abolished um, uh, aristocracy. We're also seeing at this time a centralized military and extended state control. Uh, Pahlavi helped foster a strong sense of national identity, downplayed national Arab influences, uh, and renamed the country Iran instead of Persia. In addition, he gave women across, uh, access to education and curtailed the power of the clergy. This is a big deal now, remember? We're starting to, we're basing things in Islam and now all of a sudden we're taking a big jump away and we're getting, women are going to go to school. Uh, women are going to be able to work and now we're going to start taking away some of the power of the clergy. Now, think about how this is going to go. So during World War II, Russia and the UK invade Iran to keep the country and to keep its oil from the Axis powers. Uh, Palvi was forced to abdicate in favor of Mohammad Reza Palvi, his son, who was much weaker as a Shah and was not able to stand up to the Majlis and the clerics who wanted to do away with Western influences. They wanted to get rid of them. We don't want to hear from the UK. We don't want to hear from Russia. We don't want to hear from the United States. We want our own country. It sounds a little bit like China, okay? Making connections, keep doing this, okay? A new nationalist prime minister uh, took power, Mozadek, who uh, raised fears of many uh, on many sides. Uh, clerics feared his secularism. Uh, the United States feared a potential communist takeover. Uh, we've got things happening all over the place, and so everybody's kind of got a hand in Iran at this point. Consequently, even the Shah supported the British and U.S. effort to remove him. He told him, Take, get me out of here, uh, and he was placed under house arrest until his death in 1967. The Shah agreed to nationalize the oil industry in 1951, and in response, the UK withdrew its support, halting oil production almost immediately. 
Um, as, as the UK became less relevant, the Shah allied with the United States in key policy areas, but he did not want democracy. Uh, so his suppression of democratic institutions has, a lot, has accompanied uh, United States influence. The Shah reforms in 1963, known as the White Revolution, uh, involved the top-down modernization policies that his father had promoted earlier. Opposition to the Shah was most, uh, most strongly expressed uh, by Ayatollah Khomeini, who, um, whose vision for Iran was as governed by Islam was not shared by the Shia clerics. Um, Khomeini was exiled to Iraq and later to France, but this did not his reduce his popularity. In 78, protests and clashes prompted the Shah to declare martial law. Uh, these protests continue. Remember, important protests, we're starting to talk about those. This is it, this is it. 1978-79, uh, Iran and Iran revolution. So here we are, protest, 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 okay? Make sure you know the big ones for each country. So 78 protests, the clash, um, we have martial law declared. These protests continue. There's a call for Khomeini to return to Iran. When he 